sign up for the Carolina All Out newsletter coming to you each week with updates on what's happening with Carolina All Out and interesting articles to help you in your outdoor pursuits in North Carolina. Just go to carolinaallout.com and a splash page will pop up and you put your email in and you'll be part of the crew. Sign up for it today. Back in 1962, AgriSupply started with a simple creed, provide good, solid products at a fair price. Add in stellar customer service and you have the best option. There's nine locations across North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia, and their robust online ordering makes it easy for anyone in the world to experience the Agri way. Don't hesitate. Go to agrisupply.com to find just the product you're looking for. It's the Carolina All Out Fins, Fur, and Feathers podcast with Chris Douglas, where the conversation covers all things in the NC outdoors pertaining to hunting and fishing. Like and subscribe to get all the hunting and fishing info from the top guides, locals, and conservation agencies. Hear from biologists and professionals in the field about what things matter to you most. From the studios in Lemon Springs, North Carolina, your host, Chris Douglas. And welcome to the Carolina All Out Fence Fur and Feathers podcast brought to you by our friends at Carolina Cooker. This is where people who love the outdoors come to find out about the great state of North Carolina and what she has to offer in the hunting and fishing space. I'm your humble host, Chris Douglas, and sitting in with me again, as usual and always, Josh Lawler, old Josh. <laughs> Been a good long run on these podcasts, Chris. Yeah. Being these are the start off podcast uh, and talking about me per se, as uh, the founder of Carolina All Out. Uh, It's a little bit odd, but um, because I'm so much more into talking with other people about their craft and about their profession and that sort of stuff. And that's what we're going to be talking about. But we felt like it's important to document um, a little bit about myself and what has brought us up to this point of Carolina All Out. So we're almost to this point. Right. Um, We haven't got to the point where we meet Josh for the first time. I'm still down the road a little bit. Well, somewhere along the way, we can say that we met Josh. And then Josh came in. Yeah, but Josh was a young kid, really young back then whenever I met him, and that was some of the travels. But but nevertheless, uh, we've come from me as a boy here in Lee County all the way up through my career, um, you know, kind of at the pinnacle, and now um, we're changing, switching gears, so to speak. So – um, basically told my wife, G, that I was done with all the travel, and of course she didn't believe me, and now here we are. Um, I was pretty much right. I was pretty much done. All right. And um, and so uh, when I came off the road, now we're back into that situation I was many years ago where I don't know, you know, I basically walked away from this industry, you know. And um, I had uh, – I had some opportunities to um, get involved with with some other people that were just coming on at the time, and and uh, it wasn't requiring me to go off into any high adventure stuff. But I will say, now when I was with with Levi, um, Levi Morgan. Okay, so so I can get into that real quick. Levi, I met Levi up in Illinois. Um, he was working on a project uh, called Next Level Archery, and uh, there I met Levi. I met. Um, Greg Poole, who Greg Poole's a fairly well-known name in the archery uh, as far as target archery goes. Um, I, I don't Bo know. Bo Junkie what, Media. Bo Junkie Media. There you go. Bo Junkie Media. And Josh listens to a I lot listen of those podcasts, yeah. so he, he's familiar with Greg. Um, met Tim Gillingham. Um, oh, gosh. Gosh, there's a uh, – Gosh, there was a bunch of different ones that I met at the time, and I, those are the main predominant guys that, you know, I dealt with and worked with, so I'll just kind of end it right there. But um, from that – we um we ended up um uh D- Levi was tra- and his wife Samantha had a, a small show called um I think Life on the Road and um you know th- he wanted to take that to the next level if you will he wanted to to do that and 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 rightfully so Levi was you know he was probably the man at the time and and to a degree still is I mean he's just a f- fantastic archer uh, competition archer from North Carolina right from the mountains of North Carolina up around Rossman and, and uh, Brevard area. And um, and so, you know, he, he had – I mean, he was coming on strong. I mean, he had so much going on for him at that time and still does. Uh, and uh, I happened to be in the right place at the right time and was able to, to work with him. 
and and I'd say maybe helped him along in a little way. So you you can ask Levi and see if you know if I played any significant role in what he was doing at the time. But I felt like you know we had a great relationship, and I enjoyed working with him. And um, and so Levi was just moving on to, you know, he was just jumping leaps and bounds, and and with me kind of getting out of it a little bit more, it was just going to be, you know, that was I was not going to be a. a I don't want to say it, I've used to him, but you know he he had a lot going on, and he had Micah coming on his brother, and Micah's right. a fantastic producer, and uh, and camera guy, and so I really uh, I just really appreciate what he's done um, with the show, and um, and you know they've got Bow Life now, and all the other sort of brands that's going on, and Levi's you know moving into a more uh, mature role in the industry, and you know good for him, and I'm very excited for him and his family. Got a beautiful family. Gosh, Samantha's had what they've had four kids now. Yep. Started a big one, yeah, big one, and you know they're just family people. Yeah. They just are, you know. Got and I and I really, really appreciate that. And we need more family people in this industry that really live the life and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, good for him. And and I was, uh, I was very proud to work with him. But I did do an adventure hunt with him, and we ended up going to uh, none of it and uh, did a muskox hunt. <laughs> That's pretty high adventure, if you yeah. ask me. Yep, that was in like twenty five below. Right. Yeah. Sustain. Mm. Riding on the back of uh, of the uh, of, of riding on the <laughs> riding on the back of uh, of snowmobile sleds on sleds being right. pulled by snowmobiles and uh, and and he killed a really nice musk ox and did it with a bow and uh, yeah what an adventure that was and uh, so I was very very proud to be have been a part and and work with him on those sort of things so so yep that was a that was a big deal I, I will say that I did do a little bit more I met um, Andy Mack. And um, Andy Mack uh, had a, a TV show uh, for a, a long time, um, and then he wanted to up his game. And he's a doctor out of uh, he was a doctor out of Longview, Texas. And uh, I traveled with him for a fall um, elk hunting, and um, and we did some whitetail hunting as well. We I traveled with him for the most part of it, and we were just you know on on a mission to try to get enough shows for him to do his thing, and. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, so that that happened. He, uh, you know, he him being a, a doctor, uh, he was already an important man already. He didn't need any more of that. So he, uh, I think, he's pretty much decided then he wasn't going to go any further with that. And then he went for a successful run as mayor of Longview, Texas, and he's been mayor for a long time there now. Right. So uh, yeah, he and his brothers had a great chance. I mean, what a, what a fantastic place they have up in New Mexico that they hunt elk in. Really, really neat. So I feel very privileged that I got to see that. And um, <clears throat> so all that while. I was still trying to develop what to do with Carolina, you know, with this thing I wanted to do about North Carolina. Didn't have a name for it. And um, I was like, uh, man, I, I, I think I really want to do a show. I thought at one point I wanted to do kind of a documentary thing about it. And I said, no, I think I need to do a reoccurring show and I can do this. I think I can get the funding for it. I really do. Um, so anyway, I ended up uh, meeting up with a with a with uh, someone I'd worked with in, a long time ago in Kansas who had uh, – who had substantial funds to be able to fund something like this. And uh, he liked me well enough. And so together um, he partnered up and backed me up in this whole adventure of Carolina all out. Still didn't have a name for it at the time, this Carolina TV show thing. And uh, then I, you know, I started going through the processes of, of developing the names, uh, getting the trademarks and all the other sort of stuff. And of course this, this logo that we have in the background came out of that. And um, I think that, you know, Carolina All Out, uh, the, really is the All Out brand that is all outdoors, but I wanted to do it. If we go no further than North Carolina, I am complete. I really feel that way. Um, but I will say that the brand of All Out is is open and could be utilized in other states. So there potentially could be, and we do have in the initial business plan, we have um, 13 states targeted in all southern states because we feel like the south is, you know, is what we are very comfortable with and we know. Right. And so potentially there could be an Alabama all out. It would look same logo basically, but instead of Carolina, it would say Alabama. Right. And it would have, you know, you, and so, you know, those are, those are all the things that could be very, very um, particular to each state. Right. So it would be great to have 13 Mississippi, a Texas, uh, you know, a Louisiana, a Florida, you know, a Georgia all out, all these all outs. Yeah, where people in their own state can watch what actually happens in their state. I mean, we talk about it all the time, and I think the reason why I enjoy this show the most is because we're just 
you know, you get tired of the... I, I don't want to say you get tired of it. And I don't want to say I got tired of y'all's programming that you used to produce for so long, but there's only so much an average guy can do. Right. You know, and it's like... <laughs> And I feel like that's why, you know, Michael Waddell, he was popular because he was just an average Southern guy going around hunting all these places. But even then, that's not typically a very average thing to do. Right. Even though if you act average while you're out there doing it. And there's nothing on him against that. I still think it's awesome. But uh, when I was growing up, you never saw, and, and now I know there's other shows that I didn't see, but you never just saw a targeted North Carolina hunting and fishing show. Right. If that makes sense, just exclusively hunting and fishing that happened right here in the state. And and I feel like that is it's pretty important to to see those kinds of things growing up because you actually it's obtainable goals, if that makes sense. It's mm-hmm. something obtainable that you can do. So right. I mean and that's just my little spiel about it. And I mean you're gonna go into how it all started, but for me, I'd much rather see you know, 130-inch deer die in Sanford, North Carolina, then the same old 160, 170 in Iowa, and that's pretty awesome. I'll watch it, but it's nothing new to me. Right. And people in their own state being able to watch things that are happening in their state, Yes. I feel like is, you know, the next thing. Yes. So. And you're getting what, the same thing that we've been trying to to trying to do. Of course, you got a little inside track on it now. Right. But, but you talked to me about this, and you, that was part of our, journey that we when we began was that you know I think I spent probably too much time explaining what I was about and what what this show should be about and how you know we want to promote if if I can get into some fundamentals of it for people who are listening about this Carolina all out thing in the treatment of this thing when I was first writing it one of the things I wanted to promote is instilling pride in the North Carolina outdoorsman. Meaning I wanted our outdoorsmen to be proud of their state and not because, because I met a lot of North Carolina guys over my career who were hunting in Kansas, who were hunting right. in Saskatchewan, who were yeah. hunting, you know, Mexico and all these things. And these guys were, you know, <clears throat> wanting something more than what North Carolina had to offer there. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've hunted outside the state specifically, not videoing, but I've hunted in Kansas and different places like that. And, yes, it is an awesome place to go, but we really do have something special here. And, you know, we might not have the biggest deer, but we've got a lot of deer. And right. we have a really cool experience in deer hunting here. We've got over 2 million acres of public ground. Right. We don't even get into that. I know. But that's one of the special things about North Carolina, that we have so much to be in eastern an eastern state, a mid-Atlantic state, we have that much ground right. to hunt. Um, it's pretty special. Um, and that that's it, instilling pride in the North Carolina sports. And, <clears throat> and the things we fall short on is like, it's the craziest thing. We'll, I mean, I'm all about deer. I'm really not all about anything else but deer. Right. I, I, I do other things to fill time. You know, I fish and I do things like that. But just after, you know, how many seasons – like we're on season eight and I've been a part of seven of them. And so some of my most popular shows are not big game animals. Right. It is little panfish and <laughs> it's amazing, hunting it? raccoons. And, you know, it's, it's just like, it, it's crazy what the average person wants to see. And it's not always these huge big game animals that get killed or mm-hmm. these huge nice bucks that I like. Most of the times it's these shows that you would never expect to go crazy. That's right. It's what people actually enjoy watching, like the taxidermy show. Yes. It's like you could not have paid me to, and I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. And it's like, but still, it's, it's not always about the big game hunting. It's about everything that makes up North Carolina. Like there are guys. Right now, getting ready to go striper fishing yes. on the Roanoke or what all these rivers, and it's like stuff. There's stuff to do year around that never gets shown, but thousands and thousands of people do it. Yes, that's so, right. Preach I think it's Josh. cool. Well, that's just right. what I'm saying. It's like I, me and you will be worried about a show. Like, well, I don't know, man. It's just just a show. It's just floating for squirrels, but it's like, it, or I don't know, but it'll be the most popular show we've ever done. Yep. And it'll be the most lackluster video I've ever shot. The editing 
stinks and the music's kind of corny, but people watch it and they like it a whole lot better than the slow motion deer coming in. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. there's nothing against that, but I, I, now that I've seen it, I know that if it's in your state and there are very, there's a certain amount of people that like to do it, they will watch it. And even people that haven't done it will see it and want to do it because yes. it's obtainable That's and they right. can do it. That's right. So, that that connection we talk about. Yeah. It it is connecting. When we catch panfish on the Lumber River out of those little creek boats. Yeah. It is one of them things people I know people are saying, I, I did that yep. with my granddaddy when I was little, or I could do that. Mm-hmm. It's not a sixty thousand dollar bass boat with an eighty thousand dollar truck pulling it Mm-mm. and all the fifty rods, you know, it's you know, it could be upwards of It'd be upwards of ten thousand dollars of rods and bait sitting on a, on any one of those boats, right? And that is such a unobtainable thing for many. For me, it's unobtainable. There's no way I can afford right. all that. And and uh, so when we do these these more simple shows, Josh and I are guilty of saying, "Yeah, it'll be a show. It'll be a show." I but, say that all the time. It's like, well, I'm like, I'm not very confident in the way that I shot it. Yeah, you know, it's right. like, well, people don't care. Because it's hard. I, I, I'll say this to people who are, are listening to this. <clears throat> it is hard to maintain a certain level of excitement about a show to the point that you will shoot a show with the same level of excitement I'm describing. It, yeah. it, it, that, does, that sounds circular, but what I mean it as it is hard to keep the enthusiasm up to where you will finish a show out and do all the marks because we have certain marks we have to do. How many people have watched Chris say, so and so, this is Carolina all yeah. out. That that has been going on since day one of the shows, and it is very hard at the end of the day, if you've caught fish or whatever, to make yourself hold up too crappy, and go <laughs> crappy fishing. Is Jordan? I, you know, we, know, we sit there and struggle like nobody's business trying to come up with a catchy phrase to do for these shows. Yeah, it's like, well, at least for me, it's the deer hunting shows are always going to look epic. The drum fishing shows are always going to look epic because yep. they're fun. To, and the turkey shows, yep. they those three are always going to be the most epic, cool-looking shows because I enjoy shooting them. People won't watch them. They, people watch them. They watch them. They want to see you go surf fishing and cook it on the uh, bank. That's right. Go cush, you know, cook it up on the, in the sand, that's you know. Right. And so that's what people want to see. They want to see you fry it up right there. Because they've seen enough of deer. Yep. And they've seen enough of turkeys. If they wanted to watch that. But then, like I said, they still, because it's, it's North Carolina, there's an edge to it. There's an itch, But yep. they still like seeing this other stuff. Yeah. No, you, you're right, Josh. That's where, well, that's all we can hope for. Because we know that we're not going to compete as a deer show. Nor do we want to. Nor do we, we want to. We shoot one a year, you know. It's like That's right. One and or it's two. almost like I am at, at the greatest relief whenever that gun goes off and that deer falls. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's hard. Like, it's, it's very hard. And we we love it. I mean, I'd love to be a, you know, be a on-camera deer hunter and shoot deer all over the place. But at the end of the day, you know, we get one down and, um, and, and we're good with that. And, you know, um, it, shoot, man, I, I tell you what, there's probably – there are shows that we're not even going to imagine that are going to just take off that that we would have never thought. But I think we're getting a clue now. So we have this in, inclination that this one might be a pretty good one. Right. You know? And because it, it's a simple one, because we're learning from these things. But, I've, hey, look, I can tell you we've got creek trips planned out coming up, got some really good bluegill trips planned out. They don't sound – people ask me, hey, what's the next adventure you're doing? I got a bluegill trip that I'm really excited about. That doesn't even ring a bell with them. But once people see it, they get into it. You yeah. Know? They, they they just remember things about it, you know. Mm-hmm. So so being, being uh, you know, the squirrel hunt we just did, you know, that might take off. I think it will. It's, it's adventurous and obtainable. And obtainable. It is. It is a connection that people are making with, and we're proud to make that connection with people. So, so again, back to what Carolina All Out is about. Um, we are – we are about making a connection with our people, but also we are about bringing pride back to the state of North Carolina and exploring what we say in the, the biggest part of it is exploring the natural resources of North Carolina through hunting and fishing. And so, you know, when we talk about these resources, <clears throat> we could talk about the black bear resource we have. What a, what a, what a, what a wildlife success story that is. And, 
how popular the bears are becoming in North Carolina to the point that they are basically out of reach for a lot of people, for most people in North Carolina, it's sad right. to say. And uh, we're talking about red drum. And red drum aren't, aren't out of reach, but the big bull reds that we have in the Pamlico are some of the largest out there, and it's an awesome fishery, but it's in danger. You know, there, there's there's issues with that fishery. and, and The you flounder, know, too. The flounder. Um, the trout. Yep. Not so much trout, the the, the gray trout especially, specifically, but there are other other fisheries on our on our coastline that we've got issues with, that you know we are slowly but surely addressing as I become more more educated on that subject, you know. So uh, look, we're going to get more into that. I want to take a break. Uh, Josh going to go cross eyed on me again. I got to keep him because I've just kept him on and on and on through this big story in my life that he already knows most of them because he's had to listen to me for years already now. So we're going to come back with the. Uh, with more about Carolina All Out and what we are. You're listening to the All Out Fins, Fur, and Feathers podcast. We'll be right back. Don't forget that Carolina All Out has merch. New designs are dropping on a regular basis. Show everyone you are proud of the NC Outdoor community and a devoted follower to NC's number one hunting and fishing show. Go to carolinaallout.com backslash shop and get your hats, shirts, flags, and stickers or koozies today. And we're back. And we're talking about me. A little bit more about the show. More about the show because that's that's what the most important thing yeah. is here. We had to kind of give you a rundown of me over the past uh, few episodes, the past, past few podcasts, and now we're on to what we really are excited about, and that is North Carolina and Carolina All Out. So, so we got to the point where um, I got some funding, um, a partner, if you will, and off we go. Uh, we started out um, with with thirteen originals, and uh, airing in the third and fourth quarter. A lot of non important stuff for most people, but you know we 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 actually launched at the Dixie Deer Classic in two thousand seventeen. Is when we we launched. We started in two thousand sixteen shooting and everything, but two thousand seventeen we started with we we um, debuted a, with a booth at the Dixie Deer Classic. <clears throat> I can't say enough about the Wake County Wildlife Wildlife Club. And how they have supported us through this whole thing, um, and you know, part of that reason is because I give them so many. Accl- they they are really part of what shaped us in this whole thing as well in my career. Josh has been shaped by the Dixie Deer Classic. He's got to meet a number of people and see a number of right. you know TV hunters and whatnot through the the Dixie Deer Classic. It's where we all come together in March um, to to see what the latest and greatest is and um and to celebrate uh the whitetail deer in north carolina yeah no just doubt. The, just celebrate the year celebrate yeah. the year it's a great time you know everybody's kind of done with whitetails the 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 heads are dried now they can be scored officially yeah if you killed it on you know say january 1st you know you can you can now uh score this officially but but nevertheless these uh um the Wake County Wildlife Club has been great for us and, and to us. We launched there at their event at the Dixie Deer Classic in 2017. And um, we had a great time there, and we had a, a, a lot of response. And we saw a, a major jump in our Facebook page there because, you know, we just had launched. The th- we just had put the Facebook page out, and we just had a few posts, you know. And it was, you know, it's just like anybody else. If you've tried to launch a, a, a YouTube channel or a Facebook page, it's tough getting those viewers and those followers. Um, but we've been very fortunate. It was a great place for us to do it because we had, you know, somewhere around 20,000 people come through and we got to talk to a lot of people. And so we picked up. And so it wasn't long we had about 2,000, 2,500. I remember the day we broke 5,000 and I was super excited right, about that. Yeah. <clears throat> and we have earned them. We have not bought, we have not bought any. Not a single one. Not a single one. We've never bought a, uh, a, a follower. Um, we've done very little, um, promotion as far as buying ads to just get the get the information out there to people and we're going to change we're going to do more of that because it takes that really you know you can have the best brand in the world but if no one is aware of it then you know you don't have much and so we don't know if we've got the best brand in the world but we know we've got a brand as a North Carolina sportsman that you should know about and so we're excited whenever new people find out about us and so there's pockets in North Carolina 
where people don't know about us. And so we are dedicated to getting that information out because we want to become, you know, part of this business plan for Carolina All Out is to become a resource for information um, about where to hunt and where to fish, you know, alongside of the Wildlife Resources Commission and, uh, and, and others, you know, that are putting that information out. So we want to become that source of information for people in the state. We want to be that trusted. And, uh, and so that is a big goal for me um, as we go. And so, you know, we've spent the last <clears throat> eight seasons now. We're in eight, season eight. Season eight. Josh has been with us for seven. And uh, we're in that situation where um, that we feel like we are getting there where people are trusting what we say. We are known uh, as somewhat of an authority in North Carolina. At least we hope so. And I know, and 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 I hope that you'll see through these shows that we do that I never claim to be the um, professional or the all-knowing entity in this thing. We we go many times with guides and locals who know their craft and know it well, and we handpick these people, and we want to talk to them. We want to we want them to talk to us about what they know and how to direct people to become better fishermen and hunters. In North Carolina, and we know that you know some of these things we do on our own, like uh, you know we'll do a duck hunting trip, we'll do whatever. We hope that's an inspiration to you to get out and try it yourself. So all of that comes into play here, right? When it comes to Carolina all out there, yeah. And if <laughs> and if you want to think Chris is too full of himself, just go watch uh go watch the most pre- previous drum show. Chris does not have to catch a fish for it to be a show. So <laughs> that's right, that's right. I would love to say that I could kick out a show because uh, I didn't catch anything. But you'll find, if you pay attention, you'll see several shows out there that we even have. Or a Dove show. Or a Dove show, yeah. I mean, I can <laughs> – you shouldn't have mentioned that. No, I that know, was fine. Yeah. No, that was fine. Um, no, that that I don't catch a fish in. But we caught fish. Now, I'm not going to give you a show that we don't catch fish in, period. That makes no sense. But, but if I don't catch them but whoever's on the boat does – then it's worthy. I'm not going to just kick that show out when we've got perfectly good fish to show people catch. I don't catch them every time. Um, I, I could. I tell people I've proven you don't have to know how to fish to have your own TV show. That's, <laughs> That's and me. that is very true. So. <laughs> oh, but we've had a good time with doing it there. So I'll quickly talk about the logo itself because that came. That was very special time. Um, we we've heard from KC and uh, KC is uh, Kenneth Chess and a good friend of mine and he's been a part of uh, part of our podcast well you're going to hear from him i should say we've done a podcast with him you're going to hear him coming up and he's going to talk about his background and he's played such an integral part but we were all in kansas uh hunting with my partner um and when we first got this all going because that's where he's from and he owns a big ranch there a big farm and so we were um we were trying to come up with logos for this this show and you know and i you know we came up with the shape of north carolina of course is always into play but you know what we knew was that this potentially wouldn't be you know, there could be an Alabama or Mississippi or, or Georgia all out or one of these or multiple ones of those. And so we wanted a, a, a logo that would transcend all of those, that would really kind of embody what the sportsman was all about. So we started working on this, and we came up with so many different different things. And I have a lot of drawings that you can see um, that we maybe sometime we'll post that as a kind of an interesting thing and in how the, the transformation of, of the fishbone is here. But as you can see in the background, we have the – the fishbone, what we call the fishbone. And if you, of course, look on the left side, there is a, a fish skeleton. On the right side is a deer antlers inverted, of course. And then if you look in that negative space in the center there, there's a feather there. And so when you're talking about, and of course, the name of our podcast, the fins, fur, and feathers. So the fins obviously represent anything with fins, which would be fish. And of course, that's salt water or fresh water. And then the feather, of course, is anything with feathers, which would be our ducks, our doves, our quail, our beloved turkey. Um, and then, of course, the fur, even though it's a deer antler, is typically going to be deer, but anything with fur, and that would be a bear, uh, deer, um, uh, fur-bearing animals such as fox, coyote, uh, beaver, mink, and all the other things that you can trap. So we feel like this is as close as we could come to a, a logo that would embody all things, all disciplines of the sportsman. Right. And, uh, and so people like it and I like it. I'm very proud of it because I was, you know, guy that was out there drawing it and that sort of thing. Now we, you know, n- some of these things were added by other people that we came along and then we came to this. So there's, there's, it was more of an effort 
uh, by a number of people, and I'm glad to share that um, just to be a part of that. But this is what this logo is about, and we feel like it does a pretty good job of embodying it. And then we want to try to live up to that because we want to touch on all those things. So that's what you're going to see on our show. You're going to see us pursuing things with fins, fur, and feathers. And we named the podcast after it, and there's just so much there that's involved. And you <laughs> see this fish bone everywhere. It's just everywhere. It's just yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. And we hope you'll support it, of course, with the merch that you see on the <laughs> table here and on our on our shameless website. plug. <clears throat> shameless plug there, but but you know that is part of what makes us go. And and we say it in our little commercials there. It's uh, what is it? Live the no, I'm, I can't even remember now. It's like live the lifestyle. It's uh, it's wear the lifestyle. Oh yeah, that's wear right. the lifestyle. So you know, we'd hope that you uh. You might reach out to it because if you're an outdoorsman and you like to hunt, fish, or trap, then this is your logo. This represents you, and uh, and we're very proud of that. So um, there we have it. It's Carolina all out, and uh, we are eight seasons in. Josh has been the predominant. I'm going to talk about Josh for a bit because he's been the predominant uh, producer um, over the years. I started out editing the show in the beginning. I had another editor that was helping me remotely, and um, – and, uh, of course, he had other things that he needed to do because he had a career going on. And so uh, we started – we were on the search for someone. And, uh, Josh, you heard a little bit about the very beginning podcast, but Josh, you know, grew up watching some of the stuff that I had, yeah. you know, produced back in the day. And so, you know, maybe I had some level of shaping him without even knowing it. It's funny how these things work out. And I'm I'm always amazed at how these things happen. But um, I met Josh's father, Kevin, <clears throat> Old Trad, we call him. For Trad Archer. For traditional archer, because that's his handle, isn't it? On yeah, his yeah, it is. Yeah. And Kevin is a sportsman now. He's an outdoorsman, very avid, and brought Josh up in the sportsman way of things. And, I mean, had the boy out there and, and videoing on top of that. Yeah, he was videoing my hunts, you know, when I was hunting. So, he, I mean, he's kind of the guy who got me into it. But he, he raised a little monster when it comes to – Deer hunting when it, you know, because I'm so crazy about it now, you know. He might yeah. regret a little bit of that, but, you know, I push him to go hunting now. So uh, That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, Kevin uh, raising Josh up, Josh becomes the avid outdoorsman. And then, of course, through this video experience, I suppose that, you know, it was like, I don't know, at some point did Kevin say to you, you might want to go for video? Well, I was – somewhat artistic like i you know i always liked drawing mm -hmm. that was my big thing so I, I loved you know the artwork and then but there was dad always carried a camera with him like he he videoed my first deer on a little vhs tape i think it was i, I don't even know what the camera was i just know hsc or something yeah like that. something like that in 2005 i shot my first buck my carolina 11 point oh, you know man. and i think he did come to me and um we just kind of talked about it, and I wanted to do something where I could at least have an outlet for the outdoors in my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I didn't want to sit there and punch that thing in the factory or something like that or, you know, work work for the man, you know, but um, my only outlet I thought about was just video. Right. You know, and he got me into it, and that was an outlet for me, and so I went to – got my film and video production degree from East Carolina, and – I was shortly after that, I was looking for a job. But the craziest part is I met you when I was really young. Sure did. At the Golden yeah. Corral. My my dad was good friends with Kenneth Chesson, and that's what and that's what we knew him to be. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and my dad would tell me all the stories that Kenneth would tell him, you know, and, and he would tell me about it, and it would get me fired up, and that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so little did I know you were doing it as well. So it's kind of kind of weird set of circumstances for yeah. us to run into each other. Yeah, I remember your dad coming up to us at the Dixie Deer class. It was second second year, second season. And I forgot all about that. Yeah, and so I, let me just go ahead and paint it all out here. But I graduated in 2018, and that would be the start of the second season for y'all, right? Getting uh -huh, ready to start uh -huh. the second season. And I must have been at school or something. I didn't make it up to the Dixie Deer Classic, but I was graduating, and – my dad actually went up, and he started walking around because he loves going there. And he went. He, I guess he walked right up to you and showed you some of my work. And he sure did. Shortly right after that, little, uh, I don't know if he had a camera in his hand. He had a screen. I saw I remember yeah. the screen. It might have been yeah. on his phone. Yeah, I think it's on his phone. I had, yeah. we had just done a little. We called it uh, trad treks, traditional treks. It was about. It was a little short, short video about my dad and his traditional archery quest and why he does uh -huh. it. 
And uh, it was just to show my skills a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that's the one he showed you. And it worked because yeah. I saw him. I, yeah. I saw that. I saw the skills, and I was like, oh, oh, you know. And uh, and Kenneth was obviously telling me because Kevin had made some mention to Kenneth at some point, maybe maybe talking or something or another, that you were about to graduate and you were yeah. really into it and that sort of thing. <clears throat> so I was like, hey, he's coming right out of ECU. Um, I wasn't super familiar with that program up there, but most any of these programs, you can you you should be able to come out of the – program with a, an ability to produce it's a it's an artistic program that one is sure. but yeah. i learned what i needed to learn yeah. as far as working a camera and composition and editing yeah. so well i thought there was a lot of prospect there just saw, from what i saw that kevin showed me and then of course you showed up you showed up here uh, you drove all drove down for Creed yeah yeah i did yeah, i did to down. meet up and <laughs> my first show was a swan show it sure that's was. the first one i cut i didn't shoot it but i cut it but which was cool because you had quite a bit of experience yeah. in swan hunting. I'd been swan hunting for a long time. For a long time. So he, so Josh knew that very well and knew what tripped his trigger about him. And so we had some really good footage on that trip. And, right. you know, um, everybody killed one, and typically they do. And uh, and so from my point, you know, Josh, I, I hand Josh raw footage <clears throat> with all the ins and outs and the kind of a layout of the breaks and that sort of stuff. And Josh comes back to me with a pretty much an edited show. And of course, you know, he's hired. Yeah, he's you pretty hired. much just said, just do it. You let's, know, let's go. Yeah. You know. And that's a great way to really, you know, it's the way I was doing it's kind of throw throw them into the fire and go. And so, you know, that was my um uh, that was our introduction. And Josh, you know, came on and and has, you know, you can look for yourself. You can see if you go find the first swan hunt we did back in season two to what Josh is producing now. Just go to his swan hunt from last year. Yeah. You're going to see a major improvement on that, and it's just because Josh has the craft and the creative ability, and now he's coming into a mature role as an editor in storytelling and the cool factor and all that sort of stuff. So so this is a metamorphosis. I mean, I see stuff that I edited so so long ago. I'm just I just cringe. Right. But at the time, it was pretty good. Oh, no, I can't stand watching my old shows. I mean, I love it for what they are, and it teaches me a lot. But, I'll, I, man, I watch some of those old shows, and I'm like, what were you thinking? I know. You know, it's, it's like your camera's completely set up wrong. But I think it's paying those dues to really figure out what you need. That's right. You know, yeah. for other shoots and stuff like that. That's right. Well, I've seen Josh, you know, even his preparation in the field. I remember times, you know, there was, again, you know, you're coming into this thing you don't know, and that's part of what, you know, I guess maybe, you know, he looked up and got me because I, I lived his role. And so, you know, for me, I have a huge amount of patience in that regard because I know what it takes to do these sort of things. And so hopefully he's picked up some, you know, I've given him some good advice over the years and he's been able to, to pick that up. And, I mean, you know, Josh could go to work for anybody. I, I, I can say that here. I mean, he, he could do it. And and they would be absolutely satisfied with his his skill set. Um, I'm hoping to hold on to him and <laughs> you guys, you know, get on Facebook and tell him to stay. Don't go anywhere, <laughs> right. Josh. You're doing a good job. You know, stay with us. <laughs> if you support us in turn, then I can pay him more, and then we can keep him for longer. <laughs> so we're going to come back with uh, with more about Carolina All Out and what we are. You're listening to the All Out. Fins, Fur, and Feathers podcast. We'll be right back. You are in too deep with nowhere else to go. Keeping up with Carolina All Out is easy. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Like and follow to keep up with the All Out crew and our friends with posts, stories, and reels that will inspire you to get outdoors. At some point in your life, I'm betting you have probably thrown a piece of bait on a hook into one of our great state's seven amazing sounds. If you have, you know how magical they are. Well, that magic is under threat and has been for a long time. That's where the North Carolina Marine and Estuary Foundation comes in, an organization dedicated to improving management practices, educating the public, and developing practical solutions. They want to see North Carolina become the premier fishing destination in the country. And I do too. Visit ncmefoundation.org to learn more about this wonderful organization and how you can do your part in protecting the seven jewels of North Carolina and a whole lot more. Josh, 
Josh is a very integral part because Carolina All Out is first a TV show. And then we have a lot of other things that we are surrounding by. So let me lay out some of the things that Carolina All Out has going on right now. So Carolina All Out obviously has social media, which is Facebook and Instagram. Um, we have a YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel is pulling around 19,000. Yeah. We won't be long. We'll, we'll, we're going to get 20,000 here pretty soon, and I'm, I'm excited about that. That's another milestone. Um, we'd like to be more, but we we don't really focus on that. But it's become a place where people find us. So so we have that. We so so again, social media. We have a newsletter going on. Of course, this podcast is happening now, and uh, that is becoming going to become a more and more integral part of what we do because this gives us an opportunity to talk about really um, current things. Because if to understand our schedule, we are shooting now for what we will air in July, starting in July, all the way through to the end of December of 2024. So we're almost a half a year behind on everything that we shoot, sometimes a year as much as a year. Um, so the podcasts are going to keep us current along with social media and what's going on and what we're doing there. So, right. you know, you know, please do follow us if you don't already follow us on Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube. Um, YouTube is a little bit behind, but we're going to start posting some of the similar things that we post on social media on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. So that's going to, going to, going to continue to, to, to grow there and that sort of thing. So <clears throat> we are reaching out uh, through the podcast. Of, co of course we have a website and that's getting ready to be revamped. So we're going to have, you know, some really cool things going on with that um, social media and the newsletter. If I didn't mention that already, I think I did mention the newsletter. Mm, mention it again. <laughs> newsletter. We have a newsletter that goes out every week. Um, that is really, really current about what is going on. You're going to hear some of my philosophy. You're going to hear about the latest hunt that we did or fishing trip. Uh, you're going to hear about some of our sponsors and what they're offering at that time of year. Uh, you'll hear a lot of that stuff, and, and it's a great place to um, to just you know kind of be up, updated because if you're looking at email every day and all of a sudden you see you know the latest from Chris Douglas – then you're going to see something. Hopefully it'll interest you. And of course, you know, promoting our, our sponsors as well on that. So, you know, with email, with social media, with television, uh, podcasts, um, and YouTube, the web, I think we have all pretty much all the media covered. With right. This. Yeah. <clears throat> and so we want to build on these sort of things. We want to be there where people are looking for this kind of information. And when we, as far as the podcast is concerned, I'm super excited about some of the people we're going to have on this podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we do these shows. I mean, there's only so much we can fit into a show. Um, but getting the likes of Scooter Lily in here oh, and all the guides and the people we work with and to really dive in depth on what they're doing as far as fishing or mm -hmm. hunting or anything like that goes taxidermy, any of that kind of stuff, really diving into it into a podcast I think would be – Really good because then you get, you can, you know, absorb more information than what just a show can give you. That's right. So. Yeah. We, we, well, just take, well, biologists. Yeah. Biologists. We too. got biologists that are, um, that we, we've been talking to already. I mean, we're, we're going to have the two ball biologists on. We're going to have Corey and, uh, and, um, um, Ben Ricks on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be on their podcast. And these guys are, you know, these are the guys at the top of the craft when it comes to the fisheries in North Carolina. They know, what's going on and right. we got them we're going to have access i have access to them um, just on a phone call away um to help us be more informed on the, what we're going to be pursuing at the time i'm i'm super excited about the alabama bass show that we're getting ready to do yeah if you've never heard about of alabama bass you might have heard of spotted bass um kind of the same thing a little bit different but what you have is is we have a crisis going on in our mountain lakes where they are breeding with the smallmouth and basically breeding them out and uh, and out competing with the largemouth. Right. Well, yeah. they're not breeding with them, but they are out competing them for food. So we've got a serious problem with these spotted bass. And I mean, you know, you're you're having a hard time on Lake James. We Hybridizing with the smallmouth, yeah. Absolutely. And that's that's a really serious issue that the Wildlife Resources Commission is gonna is tackling right now. And we'll be able to talk about that, but we're gonna do a show about that. And we are going to absolutely fry them jokers when we get them in the cooler. And we're going to be happy about it. I'm going to be I excited. do not care. Yeah. I don't care if they're two and a half pound, but they are going to be Alabama bass fillets that are going to be eaten yeah. with, with vigor. 
You know, and it, this just brings me to one thing. We were talking about it in the last podcast, but I mentioned that you couldn't tell Chris anything, you know, about <laughs> as far as as far as hunting in the world right. goes. But if somebody told you that uh, there was good trout fishing in North Carolina or that you could go fishing in Cape Lookout when you were younger, I mean, would you have any idea what that's about? Mm. I mean, in my opinion, you knew about all these other places, but you may not have known all the things that North Carolina is about. And at least for me, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you can't tell me nothing about North Carolina because now I have done it. You know, I've done right. eight seasons of going like this, back and forth, back and forth. And that's a good thing. Yes. I enjoy that part. And I would say that now that you've started this, what do you say all the time that you've fallen in love? I've fallen in love with this state all over again. Yep. I'll say it again. I have fallen in love with this state all over again because I have come to discover more and more about it every year. I know yeah. there's still things that we haven't done right. or discovered, but I'm going for them. Right. That's, that's this is my goal, you know. And and Josh, Josh is a big help because Josh has a little, maybe a little bit more time than I do because I'm doing a lot of business stuff outside. Well, you know, involved with Caroline all that when it comes to sales and everything else. And uh, Josh is like going after because he's a sportsman at heart, so he's out there looking and 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 experiment and trying and doing different things like that and so i i'm always excited to talk to josh about what he's been up to lately you know whether he's been you know looking for ducks or whether he's been building a new uh, tilt a whirl for his crow call for his crow decoys uh on amazon buying this or whatever like that it's always fun it's a, it's a, an inspiration to me and so you know this again is is truly about the essence i feel like we're living it. I, I don't live it as much as i want to i wish that's all i had time to do was just go out and hunt and fish, but really it boils down to more like 80% computer time and business right. time yeah. and 20% hunting and fishing. But I'm really, really excited about the prospect, and I can't wait to get started on the next thing that we've right. got going on there. And then who knows what the next thing is. Uh, but coming up soon, we'll be, um, we've got, uh, we can talk about all that sort of stuff and what we've got lined up for the, for the upcoming year. But we have places for you to find us. And, uh, the future is bright for Carolina All Out. Um, we we feel like I'm not saying that we are um, economy proof, but what it takes to get involved with us doesn't cost you hardly a dime. And uh, you know we're not asking you for money or anything like that. We're just asking you to be aware of us and and to follow us and to like and subscribe whenever you can. And if you feel so so inclined, you can <laughs> reach out and comes that shameless plug to yeah. to reach out because that's where we. We we're able to do that. We're going to be at the Dixie Deer Classic, going to sell these. Come on by and see us there at the Dixie Deer Classic. We'll have hats and shirts and things like that. New designs coming up and that sort. So we you know we're excited about that. But the future is bright, and we've got a lot of, you know, the saltwater side we have not really experienced to the level that we have. And there's a reason. And why that's that. probably Josh's fault, or else I'd be it. I would be begging you to go out there. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, old Josh don't do too good on a boat with a camera. So and I don't either. Yeah. Uh, very honestly, I don't do very well on a on a boat. Uh, on, on a, um, I just haven't done for a long time, and so that is one of the reasons why you don't see us do more of these kind of trips. Because you got to remember, if we show up with a camera, and they and a guide or a charter is going to spend the money and the fuel to get us out there to the Gulf Stream or to a place, a wreck or whatever it might be, we really need to perform, and we have. Done the drama mean thing, I, to the point scope. Yeah. I mean, we've done it to the point where I'm really I'm a zombie. Yeah, I, I, I remember I'm, coming back <clears throat> after a after a drama mean bender, and I just like could not. It took me a few days to recover. It was like a it was like a hangover. It was it's it's rough and and uh and there's no complaints there. It, it is what it is, but we <laughs> it just it, we've got we're we're working on that, and we're going to try to do more of those sort of things. Uh, KC. Josh said, "If you're going to do something on the on the blue water, just bring old KC in just and let him KC. do it because Kenneth Chesson doesn't get doesn't get too sick. So we've been talking about that, and we've got some shows that we've been uh, working on that, that we think we're going to be able to pull off for you guys to show you more saltwater action. Um, <clears throat> but we can't say enough about the 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 striper fishing that we have in the state. Uh, we've got some really great, still got some great. I uh, mean, like right now, guys are catching speckled trout." I don't think we've had a really hard winter where we've got any big kill off. So there's going to be some big old trout. No freeze overs or anything like <clears throat> yeah, that. Yeah, none of that freeze over business where we lose some of our big fish. Um, we, you know, um, 
there are there we've talked about some issues with our sounds and that sort of thing with our fisheries and you know we're part of and that's what I want to just re- really quickly touch on is our sponsors. I don't want to ever overlook our sponsors. Um, we have some of the best in the world, and we have some brands that are based right here in North Carolina, and that was by design because we feel like we are promoting to North Carolina, and people in North Carolina need to support these brands. So one of the brands that we have is uh, the North Carolina Marine and Estuary Foundation, and they're dedicated to building these fisheries back to world-class status. And from that, the economies that are based around the coastlines are going to benefit from that and grow. And uh, how can you argue with that? Because, you know, so many of these economies around here are based around fishing and then all of a sudden to have a, a, the trout fishery or the red drum fishery or the flounder fishery, which we know has had some issues, um, to come back to world-class status where people, when I say world-class, that means that they're the best in the world and you can come to North Carolina and experience that and have the experience that's world-class. That's what we're trying to get to back here again. And people are going to benefit from that. Uh, the, the local economies because it's going to be bring fishermen there. It's going to bring their families there. They're going to stay in hotels. They're going to eat food. They're going to spend money on charters, fuel. Uh, it's just a, a, a plethora of things that are going to happen built around this, around around these fisheries. So Marine, the North Carolina Marine and Estuary Foundation have been great supporters of ours, and, and we really want to get the word out for them because people need to be more aware of our sounds and – how fragile they are, you know, that's been a, that's been a big thing, but I cannot not mention, and they are the sponsors of this podcast. And I will spend some time with this. And that is agri supply, a name that is basically North Carolina through and through, although they have nine stores total uh, from Virginia, all the way down to Georgia. uh, Agri supply is truly a North Carolina brand. Right. And started in Garner, uh, the Partlow family uh, back in 1962, possibly 63 in there. And they uh, have been a mainstay. I mean, literally, I've talked about this before. I remember as a kid, after we sold tobacco in the fall, going to Agri Supply and in the spring as well, and going down and picking up parts and materials and everything else for fixing tractors and plows and discs. And, and uh, you know, of course, I remember they always had these big giant cook pots out there. Yeah, 90 gallons that you could get in. You know, they were that big. They were big enough that you could hide in them if you wanted to. And so I remember all those uh, those things, and it was fond memories. And when we had the opportunity to get involved with Agri Supply, I was like, man, that, I know these people. I know this. This makes all the sense in the world to me, and it has been a fantastic relationship, and these guys are doing it in a big way that you don't even realize because they ship worldwide, and they have some fantastic branded equipment and gear and one of those uh branded gear uh, that belongs to him and a lot of people don't realize is the carolina cooker brand and that is i was talking about those wash pots um for for years they've had the, the black cast iron pots and pans and skillets and all the other sort of stuff there and they've expanded tremendously so they have i don't know how many SKUs they have on their website but if you are looking for any type of cooking gear especially for the outdoors and that old classic frying pans, black cast iron, they've got it right there with their Carolina Cooker brand. And uh, we are super excited to be a part of their family. And they really have treated us like family. I can't say enough about those guys. They have just been so great to us and supporting us in a big way. And they are very concerned about the outdoors. They are very concerned about North Carolina and her natural resources. And that's the kind of people we want to be involved with. And so we've got some great things coming up with with uh, Carolina Cooker. You guys, if you watch the show, you know that we do a uh, Appetite for the Outdoors segment every uh, show. And that's that tradition is going to carry on. And we've got some new recipes that we're working on now with them. And uh, there's all sorts of cool stuff that you can buy and purchase there with uh, Agri Supply and uh, and. Carolina Cooker being the two brands that we we are promoting here on the show there. So we'll talk more about our sponsors as time goes on, but I think it's time to wrap this three-part series up that we're doing here. We appreciate so much you taking the time to listen. Hopefully you learned a little bit about me, about my passion, and especially my passion for North Carolina and the outdoors that is here. We've got a great state. You know I love it. We'll talk about that over and over again. 
And we've got some great podcasts coming up right here on the Carolina All Outs Fins, Fur, and Feathers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Douglas, signing off. And we hope, as always, you make our state your next adventure. There's some things in life that just makes you feel good when you see it. And something cooking in an old black cast iron skillet does it for me. There's nothing like it. And if it does it for you, then my friends over at Carolina Cooker have just the equipment you need for outdoor cooking, camping, kitchen accessories, and food processing. Check out carolinacooker.com to order from their huge selection and also find a store near you that carries the brand born in the Carolinas. Carolina Cooker, tools, cooks, legends, you create the tradition. North Carolina has been a favored destination for many moving from their home states for many years. And since COVID, it's crazy how so many more have moved here. And they're not always looking for just a house and a half acre of land. Oh no, they want land where they can spread out and live a little. That's where Farms and Land Realty can help you. Selling land is what we do. If you have land that you want to sell, you need to call the people that deal with the intricacies of farms, timberland, waterfront properties, large tracks, small lots. We've got the experience and know-how to take them to the global market. Check out farmsandlandrealty.com and get your land on the market today.